Hello everybody, this is Desmond Sim here, founder of Thriving Academy and author of 7 Emotions That Prevent Your Success and I have a video for you and this is none other video than I plan to shoot but it's something about giving advice, giving comments, giving suggestion and I call it uh, in, a, in a very simple context and in, in, in public corporate world most likely will use it and abuse it they call it feedback yes and why would I talk about feedback in this video actually and um, and I have something on my chart behind and obviously I want to explain to you how does this come upon and how this re really helps you in the way you become an expert entrepreneur and you become a, a very extremely extraordinary uh, 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 awesome local business owner in whatsoever. Now, not divided into several contexts in life, particularly in how relationship, business, and career, for example. And I, I really wanted to actually uh, elaborate further how this feedback really helps you in 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 forming and forging good partnership forming good JVs with people around you, surrounding you, that really helps you and and actually spread the message further. And you want that definitely. But with this video, I'd like to share just in, 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 in a simple context from corporate point of view. For example, many employees today, bosses, still learn how to give feedback. Yes, and it is true. And they sometimes give or for feedback. You know, what they think of giving feedback is to criticize, is to uh, prejudge that person without actually looking to facts, figures, information, do some fact finding and even research. And today, corporate world relies that in, in the, as a source of information to, to groom talent, to basically to evaluate your performance in, in the company, in the corporate, in the organization itself. Now, if you actually look into you know, those who are employees and those who are bosses, I encourage you to look into how you can really uh, evaluate or change your language in encouraging your people. For example, now if you happen to have a session with your employee, you can actually find out what does this something got to do with the person in terms of evaluating the performance. For example, start with positive things. And if he does good things, start with that. People, employees, naturally want acknowledgement, want uh, some self-belonging, want some motivation, and see how far they've been doing. How can they do better in a way? So start with something like, for example, you do very good in this area. I appreciate your time. And I know you have delivered this, this, this project. You've been involving a lot. You, you do a lot of communication. You did best. You work along with team and uh, you, you have a good spirit. You, you've done this very best. This is what you need to start first. And then you can move on. Now, what I want to see in the next three months, six months, nine months, and a year down the road, these are the specific things that, that that will hopefully will get you from what you are now to the next level and will get what you are now which you might face this as a challenge in today uh, your job, your role res responsibility to the new level for example, you might want to actually take up personal development courses like presentation skills not to say your presentation skills suck but when you take up this course you will get to the next level and you'll be able to command a 1,000 um, staff a speech that kind of uh, crowd you know you, you may, your job may require to do this work this is something that you may want to highlight to employees and your staff that's involved in it now enough about corporate world what about small business owner entrepreneurs that where you have plenty opportunities to JVs with people that, that really like-minded with you and people that actually want to help you to spread the message further. Like for example, you created a product, you created a video, you created a landing page, you created a, a book for example and you ask for feedback. 
Now, before you can really do it, what are the things that you may expect from a return when people feed, giving you this feedback? And to those who want to give feedback, to those who are seriously expert entrepreneurs, learn this very carefully. If you want to actually attract more people to help you in the end of the day, to, to serve your business, and to basically uh, to have huge JVs around, huge partners that actually build this business and get make money together. This is what you need to do. First thing you got to do is to look into what he has or she has that has been developed. You see, whatever he or she has been developing, delivering and sending out to you, it was never a perfect product. It was never perfect services. That's the reason why they need comments, suggestions and feedback. People want feedback for them to know what has it been not going right. Is there anything that I've overlooked? These are the things that people are looking that they may not be able to see that. Call it a blind spot in the way itself. So you should start with giving back the feedback to them. Like for example, um, I saw your landing page, you have great video, lights are great, uh, I saw the, um, the opt-in box there, you got a good um, good bullet points there, you specific specifically tell people what do they need to know or what do they want and you get a you get an option for them to opt in and you tell them there's a bonus to download um, free page. That's fantastic. But your landing page can be greater, can be awesome, can be excellent if you could really put up a good banner that actually suits your taste or suits your needs or state we put up a bonus and opt in with an introductory less than five minutes video for example or list down the bullet points and tell them that a, a sort of like short to medium landing page a sales page and then tell them to opt in to get all the entire videos or all the other free gifts of the, or whatever audio program or ebooks that you have and let them up in. These are the specific things that you should encourage your fellow small business owner, expert entrepreneurs, uh, whether coaches, business consultants, uh, trainers, I mean a later author or, or, or speakers even in, in fact. These are the way that you need to propel and encourage them to that level where they value all this information. I tell you, the, today where am I now is because of all these feedbacks from the people that I join in the group, in the network, where they, they, they never felt tired to give me any comments. They, they, they even give a lot of support, give me a lot of encouragement, and people really need that. Because as small business owners and, 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 and entre expert entrepreneurs, unlike they are in corporate world, in corporate world, you meet your, your staff, your, your, your colleagues every single day in 8 hours or 10 hours a day and of almost 40 or 50 hours in a week. But in a small business owner, uh, on a very expert entrepreneur's environment where you only probably work alone most of the time, you have one or two staff or contractors and you're trying to work along with people from other regions uh, around the globe, most of the time you're alone. So we value that kind of um, encouragement, support, and to keep us going. This is how you should do it. And never, never actually underestimate these things for, for a small business owner, entre expert entrepreneurs. You will never know they will be the next Apple. They will be the next Facebook. Or whoever they are, they will end up become somebody that you never could think of. And one fine day, you probably will seek help from this person again. So think about it again. And thirdly, maybe on a, on a slightly personal note, personal, uh, a personal story, for example, you can give feedback in terms of your health. Now, I know some of you may be uh, not really relevant un un unlike, unless you actually work in the medical industry or somebody that actually 
do um, alternative treatments, for example, chiropractor uh, or qigong practitioner, um, I don't know that that kind of things. You could really use this method as well to your clients, and you can actually give feedback to your to your patients or your clients in terms of how they've been progressing. You know, as the last thing the patient needs is to be is to be criticized by the doctors and uh, and, and uh, the practitioners. Come on, man, they need something to keep on alive. Already they've got sick, they've already been very ill, and they don't actually ask for it. Now, obviously they know they shouldn't actually, they should take care of their health at the very first place. But if they got really sick, so what can they do? So as a very diligent, intelligent, and uh, noble medical um, expertise on, on your end, should look into ways how you could encourage and solve the soft spot in terms of psychological approach, in terms of mental approach, in terms of ways how you can actually get them encouraged to see things that they always see. For example, they may be taking some of the nutritional food that, 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 that you might be overlooking and you may want to advise them. Like for example, you know, if, you know I, I'm seeing some progress they have been doing, but you know what, you know, for the next two to four weeks, I'd like to see you to consume more vitamin Cs. I like to, I like you to, you know, to get more workout, go to, go to the gym, or practice more qigong. Maybe instead of one to three days, or maybe four days, or do yoga, for example, and uh, practice your breathing exercises. Instead, of one day, once a day, you could be three day, three times a day. So this is one you need to uh, actually cultivate as a part of giving feedback. It helps people a lot. Never wanted to underestimate and belittle people in terms of uh, that kind of feedback. That's not feedback anyway. It, it doesn't help. It just, it just damage the people, that person, a whole lot further. Last but not least, there will be relationship. Now, now giving feedback relationship is tough. I know, for example, my spouses, we have boyfriend, girlfriend, and, and, and parents, and, and children, of course. And, uh, and sometimes people will, will prejudge, I mean, most of the time prejudge in terms of spouses, for example. And use language that actually helps people. That if you think that whatever you can speak up, that you inform and you advise and you suggest, really helps the person, then tell the person. If you think that the minute you open your mouth, you 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 you, you, you will just criticize and criticize and criticize, then it's better to keep your mouth shut in the end of the day. So what you need to do is to look into areas that could really help that person. For example, your wife wanted to lose some weight, lose some pounds, and you know that you know he may look may not look good in in like like some of the movie stars in in, in magazine covers, but at least. Tell them that you know, honey. I think you probably need to dress uh, a little bit uh, fluffy stuff. And don't don't do body hugging in the way itself. Maybe let's let's start with some salads for the next thirty days. You know, maybe it helps you. You know, start with that. You know, people want to be help along. People want to be encouraged to help along. And this is something that we all need that, but we forgot about it. And that is very damaging in the end of the day. So, enough of all these areas, I've shown some several examples and giving feedback which is so powerful that could really use it day to day. But on my back sheet cover here, I've categorized from a level zero to five. There's five levels that you could really use it in giving high quality feedback. So what's high quality feedback? So what I've been telling you, what I've been actually suggesting, those languaging ways are high quality feedback. High quality feedback will comes into whether it's purposeful, whether it's encouraging, whether it's supportive, whether it's helping the people, whether it's serving the people. Anything that is not cover all these areas, that is not high quality. That is like sucks. You don't give feedback, you just criticize people a lot. And you just nature that person. Don't give feedback in the end of the day. Nobody will value your feedback. Because the last thing but not least, people don't want to be actually be self-demotivated again. That's that's pretty bizarre and it's awkward in the way itself. So let's jump into uh, this chart. And I'll start with the level zero here. What is this level zero point in this chart is 
when, when you reach level zero of type of feedback, you probably are doing lousy feedback, or maybe it's not feedback, you just self criticize, which means it's very, very low quality of feedback. So at level zero, what are the thoughts of behaviors and, and, and habits or, or, or ways you, you always tell people that you give feedback? So let's start with level zero. When you don't respond or there's no response, you're not giving any feedback, okay? If you have judgment or even pre-judgment on that person before even giving feedback, regardless of whether you know that person close or not close or you don't really like a person, either you don't give feedback or forget about it. Because the last thing but not least, you just have to save your time and do some better job and do some work that really benefit people out there. This is what I want to actually focus and cultivate. Judgment is no-no. Never judge a people when give feedback. You see, what makes me come arrive until today as one of the best literature coach in around this region, what makes me a better coach today? And I'm still learning. And one of the ways that I, be, I can become a better coach is to stop judging people. When you start judging people, you spend a whole lot of time and looking to negative elements or, or, or things that that person is not doing that well and you just waste your time a lot. So please don't do that. You know, you don't waste people's time, don't waste your own time, waste other people's time, right? Then attack. Why would you want to attack people if you want to give a comment? Don't attack people and don't throw some rubbish word or even vowel over to their people. If you don't want to give feedback, if you hate that person, don't give feedback. First stop. Now, this is actually, I'm, I'm serious because I've been in the corporate world before and I know people have personal attacks when giving feedback. And there's a reason a lot of coaches today don't give feedback and don't want to have encouraged feedback because that feedback session is not safe. It's not really people are encouraged to give feedback because their feedback has to be, for example, it helps, it serves, you know, it's supportive, it's encouraging, it's empowering. So if it's not actually covering all this area, why would you want to give feedback? So that's level zero, very lousy feedback. Level one, you argue a lot. In a way, you debate, but sometimes people think about you. You argue in a way that, uh, that that, that that person may may do very bad in that point of view, and you keep on debating and argue and argue. You know, argue sometimes may not be really bad if if you really do it in a constructive way. But trust me, human being really sucks in doing constructive feedback, especially when doing argue and debate. So forget about it. When you start going to argue with people, you spend most of your time picking on that person, bad stuff, and. You won't get anything out of it, and you spend all your effort and time talking about it, and you get tired, that person gets tired. That's a no-no. On the level two, that's where I color-coded in, in a green, green manner, where you evaluate. When you start evaluate and self-criteria, what does that mean? And if you give feedback, you start giving evaluation on your own. It could be based on your value, it could be based on your belief systems, it could be based on your principle and your practice, the way, how you live your life. Now yourself, you use your evaluation in actually impose that on that people's uh, products, services, behavior, skills and uh, performance. Never do that. Now why, why would I say that? Because a, a lot of people do not aware that by evaluating that kind of consequences, that consequences to the other person may have a setback. Because what's your value and your principle and your belief system may not be really suitable or fit that person. And that person could be a different upbringing. You may be different upbringing. You have a different education level. You probably have uh, you have gone to good colleges and you mix around with the right people. And that person may not be. so. It's a whole lot of different frequencies and channels that you want to talk to that person. So never evaluate that person, and which is actually very simple 
on doing judgment but this is slightly a little better because you evaluate you think to move to positive instead of judgment which is actually you are you're, you're sliding to a negative portion evaluate is something that you impose based on what you believe and what you know what you understand to the other person without actually looking to facts figures research or fact finding or even a simple checking out Self criteria. That's where you actually have all those criteria that you know that person you know in order to become uh, a good speaker, for example, and he he must be uh, have flawless speech, no vocabulary error, no grammatical error, no um uh and all those kind of things. For example, you know, don't you think it's it's tiring having these people who giving you feedback with that self criteria? If you if you found and you if you actually discover that kind of person in your network, in your community, stay away from that person. I advise you avoid that person totally because it's not going to help you. Because what he's doing or she is doing is imposing that kind of sets of criteria. We all have criteria for for different person. You know, you know when I meet my wife, I'm own criteria criteria as well. You know, she should be slender, tall, sexy. You know, long hair and there. yeah, that's that self criteria. But sometimes you may not get the exact perfect one that you really want to. But having self criteria, you're approaching perfectionist. When you're reaching perfectionist, you approach. You're actually using this approach. And putting people that assume that person should be perfect with their current conditions, and you have this condition on that people, you impose that, and it's not fair. So with that kind of feedback, you have very little value in helping that people. That will not help either. What about level three? Wow, a long one indeed. So, with level three feedback, what type of feedback that you're approaching? Because as as we're actually going up one level by one level, we're actually approaching a better way how to do feedback. What types of behavior and skill set can really actually help you in giving those core high quality feedback? Uh, level three feedback, which you really look into the way how people react and respond. For example, sensory based. You know, you, you may want to actually comment based on what you hear, based comment how do you feel, based comment what do you see, what do you view of that person. For example, when I look at you, and I, I believe that you may want to shift that posture a bit. You know, that would really helps you to become um, a good model. For example, and what I hear from you that you could be following that method. To pursue your career, and uh, do you think this would be best fit for you? And another sensory base, you know, based on what you have told me, I feel this is something maybe you want to consider. Now, let me explain uh, that. For example, you know, I feel that from your perspective, from your view, really needs to be improved in certain various areas. These are sensory base that you can feel and you can use your senses. All your senses has to be aware. If you don't use your senses, come on, you're a human being. You're not animals. Animals have better senses. Than, why not human being? You know, you have six senses, by the way. All right. So the next one will be your rapport. How trustworthy you are? Do you actually build trust within each other, like rapport? And you really understand that rapport can really help a person to gain trust almost instantly. You build. Your integrity, your trust, almost at the same time, rapidly, very very fast pace. Have you been actually um, uh, matching the voice and not keep on yelling and yelling and yelling? You know, instead of matching that pace, you know, understand that person uh, concerns, tonation modulation, the way how the how he or she express to you. That's most important. That's that's the key and relevant. Is it relevant? Are you giving feedback relevant to the things? Don't talk about out of the world stuff. People want feedback that actually relevant, relevant to the goal the person what do they want. You may want to ask, you know, by doing this landing page, for example, does it relate to your goal in achieving this product? 
by going to the gym more often? Does it help you to lose another 10 pounds? You know, by having more holiday together with your spouse, would that help you to repair your relationship again with your spouses? That's not a question you may want to explore. And timely. So a lot of people give feedback in the wrong time. <laughs> and and I've been I've been I've been seeing this all the time and you know when people beginning to explain and express themselves, they they wanted to be concerned and support and and the other person that that is so eager and uh, get ready and pump up and I'll just give feedback and feedback and feedback. Come on, you know, you just have to be really sensitive in the way how you give feedback. Giving feedback can be at all times, but you have to find the right timing to put your comments in there. If people don't, don't ask for feedback, don't just give feedback. But if you want to give feedback, ask permission. Do you want to hear my, my thoughts on, on this stuff? Do you, do you, mm, mm, I have something that I could think of, you know, but I don't know whether you want to uh, hear about it. And um, you know what, I, I, I've come across this a couple of weeks ago. And do you want to hear about what I want to say? Um, I don't know whether it suits you, but maybe it, it's worth a try. What do you think about this, this kind of feedback? It's great, right? So this is level three. And as we're approaching, this is level four. And this is much more exciting than I ever thought. So, whoa. This is a good, good level four feedback. Wow. When you reach level four feedback, you are giving very personalized feedback to that person. But how does that work? Personalized means that you are actually focused on that person's whole well-being. How does that work? And that requires some skills, of course. And having personalized feedback is very individual. And you don't want to actually give feedback to all the mess because your feedback is not relevant to other people out there or within the group, within the network, within your JV partners, for example. For example, that person, you may want to spend some time and have one-on-one, have a good chat and uh, inform them that I'm giving you feedback from head to tail or head to, to your foot, whatever that you want to talk about. Like for example, you want to give feedback from, from his business point of view, his career point of view, his financial point of view, his relationship point of view, his health point of view, or his strategy point of view. You know how well he is making money from the, from the past five years until now. So it's very personalized to that person and it's very intimate. And most of the time, information that being shared out during the communication is really, really, really intimate. And this intimacy actually shaped this uh, rapport and trust between both parties and having a personalized feedback conversation. That's what I call personalizing. You want to practice that if you want to do good, good, good feedback. Open, open the possibilities. Always not talk about be open, but open the possibilities. For example, if you are actually doing landing page on uh, websites here and there. You, this person will create a lot of landing page. Then you may want to ask, you know, would you consider to create landing page on mobile platform or create an app to have landing page where you may you are you might tap millions of users or phone users they want to subscribe to stuff. I don't know, but I won't want to miss that. Do you want to consider that? It's actually a huge opportunity. We all know that. People use phones a lot. And you create a very simple landing page which key your name and a phone number or I'll text you, whatever, a new update. That's a huge opportunity. Open possibility feedback. It's, 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 it's cool. It's awesome. Open is not sufficient, but open possibilities. You may want to give feedbacks all the way actually Focus on a path in the right person to explore many other op- opportunities out there that he or she may not be aware. And with your help, with your kind of thought, with your kind of exposure, you could really serve him a favor. You, know, you want to do that in your day to day. Come on. So validation. You want to validate that person. You know. Uh, you want to actually confirm that uh, this person that is doing a very good stuff. 
you want to actually put a lot of encouragement, a lot of kudos, a lot of bravos, and all those kind of good comments. Good job, you do a very good job. You 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 did awesome. You know, I, I like the way how you do. It. You know, you you you're so beautiful. You do this. You you're actually creating this product. So validation. Uh, people like validation. You know, not women only. Men, women, children. You know, and it applies to all. Then supportive, yes, I've mentioned it. Are you actually really supporting all the way when you give feedback? If you're not supporting that person, you know, if you, there's even even as a one word or even one character that you intended to give feedback without any supportive function and role, don't give that feedback. Because the minute that if you actually started to blurt out from your mouth, you're damaging that person. So always have in mind that if you are running giving feedback session, be supportive, be encouraging that. You know, I want to. I just want to know. For example, I just want you to know that uh, I'm here with you, no matter what. You just give me a call, uh, send me an email, and ping me via Facebook or tweet for me, and then look for me and reschedule a time. And I, I, I like to help you to to sort out some stuff that maybe that would really open up some opportunities, and maybe we can work together in some time in the near future. Would that be great? Right? Now finally, this is all I've been expecting. A lot, right? Wow! This is a level 5 feedback. Extremely high level feedback. I call it, when you do concise feedback, it must be very clear. For example, if you want to actually, for example, in entrepreneurs like us, you know, it would be very simple as to give uh, give this example. If you want to ask feedback on, on, on this product, how does that how does that work in concise manner? And if you say that on oh, this ebook, you know, how I oh, know I want to give feedback in a way itself that this will really helps you in actually producing more target audiences that to look for your book in not only Amazon.com or Barnes and Nobles, even Kindle or Nook. These are a very whole package of clear and concise feedback. This is what you want to actually target to help people. This is for example, you, know, you may want to have another clear feedback, very concise. People want to hear that feedback are step by step, are in function, are in order, that actually explain the whole thing with just a few words, or maybe one, two sentence in the end of the day. Curious, you always wanted to be curious in a positive manner. Not curious in fault finding pe people. Never fault finding that person, you know, if you, if you want to do it, stop it. Don't give feedback. Be curious and find out that, mm, I'm curious, you know. Um, I never thought about what you do can be really, really great, but, um, would you actually be uh, consider having this stuff? You know, I'm curious that if you if you if you if you create this product in in a, in the context of children, how does that work? Would that would that be really helpful? Would that be very impactful? You know, I don't know, but I think that could be something that you really want to enjoy about it, and it could really empower you in the end of the day. So that's curious. Now precise. It has to be really precise. Don't give feedback rah rah. For example, that uh, uh, the product is good. That's rah rah feedback. You know, you know. For example, that um, you know, I, I, I For example, that um, I, you know, I attended your speech for five for five consecutive days. In every single day, I'm I'm listening a lot of encouragement words that from you. For example, uh, you have been mentioning good, wow, great, awesome. You know, these are the few keywords that you should keep on doing for your speech and the next coming engagement whatsoever. These are the precise things that you want to actually tell people about it up front as precise feedback. Empower. Empower. Whenever you want to give feedback, please remember that you are trying to help that person. So you want to really do whatever it takes to empower that person, to really give them back the roles and responsibility, the role that they could really take action and take charge 
of what they have been doing in life, in their business, in their career, in their health, in their relationship. So if you do that, that is a whole transformative approach. If you are doing transformative approach, you are really empowering person. Now for example, I can give a statement like, in the end of the day, by doing these five products, does that make you an empowered entrepreneur? Does that really actually help you to serve millions of users in South Africa that really require your service and products by doing these five products? For example, I'm saying, you know, would this would 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 five million Africa users require your product in a way that help them to change their life once and for all. So, would you want to use this kind of language in your, in your giving feedback sessions? I'm sure you want that, because you want to empower people. And last but not least, purpose. I've been talking about purpose all the time in my videos. And when you have purpose, that purpose will really drive motivation. That's where I place it at level 5. When you always give feedback with the right purpose, you may want to ask that person, okay, when you create an ebook, or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing, uh, I'm, I'm doing jogging for five times, uh, five days consecutive and run 50 miles, for example, 50 miles a bit lot, 10 miles, for example, I run 10 miles every day for 30 days, you know, so you may want to ask, by doing, by doing 10 miles a day for the next 30 days, what does it serve in your purpose? You know, how does that serve as your own life purpose? Would you want to be healthy dramatically? Or you want to be healthy as time goes by? Or can it be more effective where you can do five miles a day, but three times in a week, where you can also do another type of exercise by achieving that goal? as part of your life purpose. So, so always think about purpose where it could really help that person. Do not actually tell them that you know your purpose sucks, you don't have a purpose, forget about it, don't do this kind of thing. No, do not actually do that. If you don't give a purposeful feedback, forget about giving feedback. If, if you don't actually empowering people with, by, by doing your giving feedback sessions, forget about doing feedback. By just doing empowering and purposeful feedback in every single session in your life, you change people's life once and for all, dramatically or instantly. So now I've highlighted all the five levels and I hope this is really serving you a, a great session. I know it's, it's running a little late here and um, I really want to help you with this session and this is what I could think of. That, that really unique and I know that not many people out there doing this type of videos, sessions for you and I hope this is actually um, serving your life, your career, and your business and relationship and help as well. I do this in my private academy coaching program, my high-end coaching program and of course my one-to-one -one and one-to-group coaching session as well. So until the next video, I hope this video really give you a few good lessons about it. Until next video, stay thrive all the time. Live a transformation life. Bye for now.